Hi, Julian DeRosier for the IIF. I'm, Jim, I'm joined here today by Jim Payne. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? I'm great. Yourself, Julian? I'm very good. Thank you. Jim, we are somewhere special. Where are we right now? You're here at 501 Alliance Avenue in Toronto. You're at our home office. Well, this is for sure to be great to have the chance to visit your uh, office, Jim, here at Dinosaur. Um, and Jim, everyone's asking, what are the latest updates? The latest updates? Well, we've got a lot of, a lot of very exciting things happening. We believe that this is the year that things really see, we see this huge turnaround. Uh, you know, I'm sure everybody's waiting to see our financials come out, our year-end financials. Our year-end financials are going to show some really good things. I mean, the fourth quarter of last year was certainly the best quarter we've ever had. And it's sort of set the stage of where things are going. So we've got a lot of exciting things happening. And, and especially in the mining industry also, I know that we're all here with PDAC going on. I've been down there for the last day and a half, back-to-back -back meetings. Um, but then, of course, we've also now ventured into green hydrogen. And we'll talk a little bit more about that after. But uh, that is the future of this company. We are currently, our, our current technology, I believe, is a bridge to the hydrogen economy. Yep. I believe it's a long bridge. But now we're crossing two bridges. So we're crossing that bridge. While we are crossing that bridge, we are certainly wanting to make sure that we're staying at the forefront of the future. Well, first thing you said, financials, great financial for quarter. That is, we're going to reassure and going to make every uh, current shareholder happy and maybe have some new one jumping aboard. Then, well, we have the chance to be here. So as we're here, as you're talking about new technology, why don't you take us for a tour of the place? Absolutely. Let's take a walk around and we're happy to show you. All right, let's go. And so here we're in the boardroom of Dinosaur and we have with us some of the hydrogen units. Maybe you want to walk us to what we're seeing here. Okay, perfect. So this, is, this was a, our original unit back in 2019. Um, we redesigned it after COVID because we had time, we had a break, we did some re-engineering and we developed this next unit here, uh, which was, was more engineering that was, we brought the water container from outside the unit to inside the unit and made some in incredible innovations and in development of uh, the units themselves. So s some of the innovations included the, the steel case. Uh, we also added uh, uh, the ECU was redesigned and, and much more reliable on the inside that controls our unit. We have communication to the unit from anywhere in the world via cellular connections which allows us to track the unit in our app, provide service and support remotely, and keep track of the performance of the unit. Well, this is great to hear. So basically you use the time of the COVID to redesign, improve, and so on. But what type of unit are we seeing? Because Hydrogen, you guys here at Dinosaur make smaller units, bigger units. Which one is this one and on which type of vehicle does it fit? This is designed for a class seven and eight truck, 10 to 15 liter engines. And uh, that, that's where our, our first focus was on the trucking market. Since then, we've evolved into the mining sector, oil and gas sector, uh, power generation units, um, and we're also running in, in Portugal. We're running on a locomotive as a first uh, trial. In, plus, we, we have a smaller version of the unit that we developed after COVID as well, which is aimed at service vehicles, uh, hydro, uh, hydro uh, companies and, uh, that are servicing the, the hydro lines. So taking that in, in, in account, that means that it's scalable from smaller size, bigger size. Why don't we go on and have a look what's happening within the unit? Perfect. Thank you. We're here with the HD1 unit. So why don't you walk us around what we can see inside? How does it work? And give us a little more details. Perfect. So we, let's start with the... Uh, electronic control module. This controls the entire unit. Uh, it also connects via cellular network to our office, as well as to the fleet manager who runs the, the customer's fleet. Is this what you call the Hydralytica? Hydralytica is the app. The app allows us to gather data from the engine and from the unit itself. We, uh, we are able to track the fuel consumption from the vehicle, upload it to our database, and then convert or assess how many carbon, how many tons of carbon are being reduced. Great. In this model, we've reduced uh, the number of connections and wires by up to 60 in, in total. Uh, we have a fan to keep the unit uh, airflow. Uh, we have the liquid containers. We have our potassium hydroxide, which goes in this, it allows the 
um, the hydrogen and the oxygen to separate from the distilled water. Uh, it also contains the water, so it mixes with the KOH, the distilled water, so it prevents it from freezing at, uh, up to minus 40 and prevents it from overheating up to 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is our reactor. This is where the gases are separated. We take distilled water, we separate H2 and O2 gases and keep the gases separate. So we're pre preparing and combining pure gases into the air intake with the diesel. The, the hydrogen enables the catalyst reaction. It burns the diesel more completely and creates a much more efficient uh, emissions. This is great. So what I see here, basically, this is the latest unit you have out. This is the one you are selling right now out to customers? Yes, this is for trucks, uh, class seven, uh, seven and eight trucks, large transport trucks on the highway. Okay, and so as I can see here, you've got a lot of tubing going on. This is the distilled water reservoir. How does a trucker comes and can refill it? So there's a cap here. We have a remote fill. We connect power to the unit from a, a tank. We connect the hose. As soon as we hit the button, it prepares the, it pushes the, the, the distilled water into the tank. And it, it runs up to 70 or 80 hours of uh, operation. Well, this for sure is, is low maintenance on this side. So how reliable is this unit versus the first one you uh, built at the, at, the first, at the beginning of Dinosert? And what, how the, what is the longevity that any trucker can expect from such a unit? So the unit itself, long, longevity, we expect up to 10 years. Um, as for reliability, we're at 99% reliability, 99.9% .9 reliability right now, which has been advanced due to the new design and everything else. Well, this is great. The other thing also is, is the size. I would be expecting something a lot bigger than that for such kind of trucks. The size seems very, very small. So where can it be installed on the truck? It, it usually is installed on the, on the rack behind the cab at the bottom or underneath, for European trucks, we install it on, on underneath on the rail. Uh, we have different mounting options, but in North America, because there's space between the yep. cab and, and the trailer, we mount it at the back. And on, for, for on anyone that's that listening that is interested by such unit, is it an intrusive kind of installation? How does it go on this side? Well, you don't have to be a mechanic. Um, I'm not quite capable of installing it, <laughs> but it, it, you know, if you're handy, it's, it's an easy install. All right, and then finishing this unit, what else do we have? So we have a unit that is actually having sensors, taking all the information in real time, transmitting it wherever in the world, goes to a Hydrolytica, which is also a fleet managing app, as you were explaining Correct. me. So basically this is kind of a 360 degree solution. So when I have this pack, I also don't need any other fleet management unit or application or so on. Typically not, uh, but what we are integrated into Geotab, which is a fleet management solution that we use, but many customers have their own and we will be able to integrate into their existing fleet management service. Well, that's great to hear. So, Ed, maybe from here, we go to the production facility. What Perfect. do you think about that? Excellent. All right, let's go. We have the production line behind us. Can you walk us through the process of building a hydrogen unit? Sure. From your uh, behind, uh, you can see uh, the process starts with the uh, spacer assembly, and we have to uh, wash them get rid of all the uh, contamination that is comes with it and then uh, we go through the back over there we stack up the reactors that's actually the heart of our unit so uh, the stack up happens we have pressure tests at the back to make sure that nothing uh, leaks so in this station, we pressure test the unit up to 60 PSI and we leave it under pressure for 10 minutes to make sure the, everything is sealed properly. On this station is where we add all the plumbings to the uh, reactor. After wires are cut, they move to crimping a station and they uh, get crimped with the proper connector. This is our electrical assembly station, which in this station we make the harnesses for HG1 and 2 and to make sure everything is connected properly using the boards. 
This is the final checkpoint uh, at the end of the assembly line, which we check uh, the unit uh, for electrical connection and also for ECU functionality and simulating the, the, uh, the environment to the unit. Okay, and we see we see a f lot of QR codes everywhere. Where are those for? Uh, these are for uh, tracking and uh, creating traceability of our product. If anything uh, goes wrong, or if uh, there's a recall, or there is uh, something like a, uh, mostly for training purposes. That's uh, that is being used to to identify uh, operators, their uh, quality of work, and if they need to be more trained, we we provide those training to them. Great. And are there any? test being done on the units before it leaves? Yes, so the main assembly line consists of uh, four testing. Two is uh, pressure testing to make sure there's no leak before the unit leaves the door. And then uh, also we have two electrical stations for testing. One is here and then the last station is for uh, ECU functionality test, which we actually simulate the natural environment to the unit and we see if the units are operating. Okay, great. Yeah. And then, so what are the what are the norms here in the production line? Uh, we're located in Toronto, in Ontario. Are there any national norms you guys have to respect? How, how does it go? Or do you actually just are able to uh, work through the production line as many units as you want per day? Or maybe even maybe what's happening with COVID, for example, here? Uh, the, during COVID, we had to reduce our capacity to half. Uh, to have what we had, but uh, after uh, the uh, kind of the protocols uh, got a little bit eased down, so uh, we 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 get back to the uh, to our uh, normal capacity. Right now, uh, our capacity is uh, eight uh, units per hour, but we can scale that up to uh, four minute cycle time, which is like 12, 12 units per hour. Okay, perfect. Well, that sounds great. Well, Tevam, thank you very much for your sure. time, and uh, yeah, let's continue the tour. All right. Thank you. My name is David Bridge, and I've been with Dynastrick for over seven years now. I've been involved uh, initially with the creation of the um, Smart ECU, and since then I've been primarily focused on developing the patents for um, Dynastrick. Well, and I guess this is the reason why we're here. We're surrounded by Dynastrick patents. Can you maybe walk us through first patents you guys acquired, and maybe even more than that, how do we even file a patent? Yeah, so we, um, uh, Dynastrick first acquired patents uh, back in 2015 and um, when I came on board I took responsibility of um, getting that patent through from an application to a granted patent for Dynastrick. Then uh, subsequent to that we filed a patent for the Smart ECU, that was the invention of the Smart ECU technology. And then um, there were uh, subsequent applications prior to the Smart ECU application. Um, to date, we've got over uh, 23 granted patents across the world, and we've got about 30 plus applications. Okay, so basically you have um, over 20 patents that's been granted, so basically that means that this is exclusive rights for Dinosaur to use those technology or those inventions all across the world or where your patents actually are located? It is um, exclusively to Dinosaur around the world. So okay. we've, got it, we've got it filed in various um, jurisdictions around the world. Well, that's great to hear. Can you give us an example of new patents you guys filled up lately or that you, the latest one that's been granted to you? Um, the latest one was, um, it, it's based on the, um, um, it's based on AI around the smart ECU. Basically what it does is it collects information, it looks for trends, and it makes certain decisions. So oh. it, it's all around artificial intelligence. Well, this is very inter interesting to hear because obviously we hear a lot about AI and then sometimes we are wondering what kind of real application it has in the world and then how can company leverage AI into their daily business. It seems like you guys are at the front front, front forefront of this. Yes, we are. We have actually and we're continuing to uh, focus in that area because as you said, it, it's the the whole world is moving into AI today, and, and we want to be part of that process. But this obviously required very specialized uh, workers, so what do you have in-house as of AI? Do you outsource it? Do you insource it? How is it your relationship with it? No, we, we outsource it. So uh, uh, first we, come, we invent the technology, we come up with the idea, and we file the patent application, and then we worked with um, specialized uh, vendors to to implement that technology for us. 
Great. So any last comments on patents? Anything we can expect? Any patent you filed that you're really proud of and that you're expecting to be granted uh, when the decision come up very soon? Well, we've, we, we have had patents that have been granted that we are very proud of. One is the invention of the smart DCU. Yep. The second is the systems and method for collecting uh, uh, greenhouse gas. That has been a significant um, achievement, I think, for Dynasert. And we've got ap those applications which have, are still in progress in other parts of the world. In terms of new technologies, yes, uh, there is, that's a work in progress. I, don't, I cannot, because due to the confidentiality yep. of it, I can't get into the detail, but we are continuing to forge ahead with new technologies. Well, this is good to hear. Obviously, Dinosart is moving forward technology-wise, keeping the trend, keeping it being in uh, as a, acting as a leader, a leader as you said. Now with the patent into the uh, in carbon uh, collecting information and so on, that it can lead to further certification down the road, further increase in business model and improve revenues. Well. David, thank you very much for your time. That was very great to hear. Thank you. So, hi, Michael. How are you doing? Hi. Good. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm doing very good. Thank you. Uh, so, Michael, it's very great to see a young face here at Dinosert. Um, can you describe us your position here in the company? I'm currently working as a data anal analyst uh, at Dinosert. Well, data analyst, this is something that sounds always exciting for everyone around. Everything is based on data today's world. Um, so, basically, is the data in-source, in-house, how are you connecting the data that all of those units are producing? So we have a centralized data warehouse uh, at Dynasert. So this is directly on-site and this is where every single unit that actually is on the road, is producing data, is sent in here for analysis, is that correct? Uh, so the data will send on the cloud and, uh, and will we'll eventually send to here for processing, for analysts. Okay, so first it goes into the clouds on the servers, then from there it goes in here for analysis and for decision-taking processes here, or is done within the unit? Uh, it's, it's done in here. Okay, and then that, that communicates back to the units and gives them instruction how to behave be better, how to improve the, the um, actually the savings, both in, in, in carbon, both is in, in fuel and so on. And this means that there's a lot of back and forth of, of data. How's the data security here at Dynasort? So uh, we, we care about data security. So data is, is secured at the data warehouse uh, with, with encryption. Um, and is, it a, is, it the, is the encryption on both sides actually or only on your side? It's on the both side. Okay, for, great. For so the, then for the customer and also for our own on premises security. Okay, so anyone that even intercepts single cannot even read it and so on. It really needs having the keys on both sides. That's correct. So the data is encrypted, bef encrypted before sending out. So there's no way, so there's very low possibility being intercepted or being uh, translated. Well, this is surely good to hear for uh, potential clients and actual clients because we know uh, right now security is a big issue and the, the world is now a connected place and we hear bad stories everywhere, but it's good to see that uh, the hydrogen units are in good hands regarding securities. Now, maybe one last question. What does a data analyst does here specifically at Dynasert? What is your day like? So my day like is uh, generating report and uh, 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 calculating the uh, unit's performance um, because the performance will vary uh, based on different track and different season. So we have to. So so the so the job for me is to get a trend and get get the deliver the correct report for the customer. Can can we use optimizing? As optimizing. A well, this is good to hear because obviously, if anyone who buys a unit knows that the unit is going to be keeping on learning, will the use actually more use, more yes. learning, and then more optimization at the end? That's correct. So the data is uh, accumulating over the time. So uh, we're learning the trend uh, based on the, uh, the over the period. So uh, over the period, we'll have a more accurate and more smart way of calculating the fuel consumption and, and leads to the uh, carbon credit. So that, does that mean actually that the unit adapts to every single driver out there? Uh, that, that's, uh, so yeah, that's correct. 
Well, this is good to hear. So basically for every single driver that has this truck, that has his own habits, his own habit of acceleration, of deceleration, his own driving, then the hydrogen takes it on it upon itself of optimizing the process for them. Yes, and we'll come to a better optimization to all the, to all, to all the customer and uh, adapt to their driving habit. Well, that was very interesting. Michael, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Continuing our tour of the Dinosaur offices, we are here in the R&D department and joined by Davey. Hi Davey, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you very much. Davey, could you introduce yourself and your role within Dinosaur, please? Uh, yeah, so um, my name is Gurjan Yavi and uh, I'm Head of Research and Development for Dinosaur and I'm also Chief Executive Officer for Cypher Neutron, a privately held company uh, in Toronto. Okay, well then we see you, we see the R&D labs here, so can you tell us what you guys are working on, exciting thing that you have the right, obviously, to disclose? What's happening right now? Um, right now, we are developing uh, the next generation uh, electrolyzers to produce green hydrogen. Uh, we have just announced a, a partnership with Siphon Neutron and with Danaster. Uh, we are developing world's biggest AEM electrolyzer. Uh, so basically, um, AEM, uh, stands for anion exchange membrane electrolysis so uh, what we do in this electrolysis is we use water and we break it into hydrogen and oxygen gases uh, we do all that uh, without using any traditional precious metals mm -hmm. uh, and we, we we do it at much more efficiency so our electrolyzers in development right now uh, we have achieved up to 82 percent efficiency in lab so which is going to bring down the 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 prices for green hydrogen, which is right now four to five dollars, our target is to bring it under two dollars in the near future. Well, this is great to hear. Obviously, there's a big rush, big rush on technology, big rush on the first comer to be there. Over 80 percent efficiency is some very, yeah. very great results. Uh, what type, what size are we talking of? Uh, so right now we we had, we have developed five kilowatt electrolyzer. Uh, in terms of numbers, if I have to say that a uh, 5 kilowatt electrolyzer will produce 1,000 liters of hydrogen uh, per hour. So basically in a day, uh, 24,000 24, yep. liters, just close to 2, kg, two kilograms of hydrogen a day. Uh, we are developing now the next models, which is uh, 10 kilowatt, 50 kilowatts, and very soon uh, we are announcing to interesting projects with other partners that we are in talks with to develop 250 kilowatt electrolyzer stack for AEMs. And for everyone out there, maybe giving them an example they can rely to, we all played and we all did electrolysis at school yeah. or somewhere where we had an anode and a cathode and then it was creating little bubbles. So this is what you guys are doing at an industrial level and optimizing efficiency. So the end product is definitely hydrogen, uh, but the, the chemistry class that you just mentioned uh, that kind of electrolysis is traditional electrolysis called alkaline. So in that type of electrolysis in schools, we do not have any membrane inside. So what we do is put two uh, electrodes inside, yeah. one anode, one cathode, and we produce bubbles and one is hydrogen, one is oxygen gas. The problem, there's, there are certain pros and cons of doing that electrolysis. Um, one of them being pressure because as you know, the gases are producing side by side, so it's very hard to differentiate or exactly. keeping them separate. Um, we have gone further to that. We have developed, we have worked with a company or we have we used a membrane in, in, in between those two electrodes. Um, and we, we, we do, as you see here, uh, these are all the inks that we prepare. So these ink preparation after it's done, we coat this ink on the membrane, yep. which excites the mo water molecules. So, so same, still the same process, but we excite the water molecules uh, to produce hydrogen at more efficiency and we use that membrane to separate these two gases so they can be used for industrial purposes. That's great to hear. So that was a very good explanation, David. Thank you very much. But one last thing before I let you go. How long does those process in R&D take? Uh, we've been doing this from years now. I mean, Dinosaur actually uh, is in hydrogen market from last 20 years now. And we are one of the first companies in, in, in Canada um, you know, talking about big scale green hydrogen production. So um, it takes time. I mean, it's research and development. And But finally, we have developed the five kilowatt electrolyzers and uh, we are planning to launch uh, those electrolyzers by 
uh, end of this year, Q4 2023. Well, that's great to hear. I wish you guys a big Eureka moment. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much for your time, David. Thank you very much. So hi again, Jim. Can you tell us a little more about what's at here? This seems like a massive hydrogen unit. What is it for? Well, this unit here, this is our HG4. I mean, so this is not our massive one. We've actually got one larger than this, but these are for the mining industry. These are actually uh, just being put together. These are already earmarked to be shipped off in the mining industry as we just came back from PDAC. I mean, you know, we're certainly very proud of you know, the acceptance of our product line now in the mining industry. We're seeing huge success in the mining industry. They are very, very keen on it. Our units, you know, although they're not a cheap unit, their return on investment is less than five months. You look at these big trucks, these big earth movers that they have in the open pit mines, they're burning in excess of a million liters of fuel per year. They came back and they said, you know, at 5% fuel savings, this is a no brainer. They're getting double digit fuel savings. And of course, they're seeing the reduction in emissions that we've always talked about, you know. So, I mean, this is, you know, the mining industry is really, really gaining uh, recognition very quickly. It was very interesting walking around PDAC, you know, yesterday, almost every major mining company now, I go and introduce myself, like, oh yeah, Dinosaur, yeah, we know all about you. I mean, it's, we are becoming, you know, the, uh, the Kleenex in the, well, absolutely. And it's good to hear. We heard a lot about uh, Dinosaur and the technology in mining in Deba. We heard a lot about it now to, in PDAC was it the past few days and even today. Um, so basically, those machines, they go directly on each and every big truck that's out there. And as I can see, it's, it's built solid. It is built solid. It is very rugged. Uh, we've worked very, very closely with our, well, with our dealer H2 Tech. They've been very instrumental in working with us and their customers and uh, you know because when we first shipped units I gotta be honest I mean they were not as rugged as what was needed for those so we worked with them with their engineering team and our engineering team to come up with units that are steadfast and rugged and seeing great results. Well, this is amazing, Jim. I want to thank you very much for the tour of the entire facility that was enlightening for everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. And now, Jim, maybe any closing statement? I think the closing statement is, uh, I think this is a very, very exciting year for Dinosaur. I know we've all been waiting a very long time for this. Uh, you know, I look back to where we were just pre-COVID, uh, you know, the stock was starting to soar and things were starting to take off. We went through a real downturn, as most companies did, but I really believe that we are there again. And I think that, you know, that curve that we've seen back pre-COVID, I think that's just a tidbit of what we're going to see over the next year or two. Well, Jim, thank you very much. Very impressive facility, great people, great employee. We had a chance to go to different departments here to go see exactly from A to Z how everything is built, how everything is done. That was Julian DeRosi from the IIF with Jim Payne, CEO of Dinosaur. Jim, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Julian.